In this video, we'll add the ability to log in as a user and log out. And then when we log in, what will happen is we'll be redirected back to the dashboard. We'll add dashboard routes, we'll add middleware here. We'll make sure the user can use the dashboard. So if we log out and try to get to the dashboard, what happens? Boom, planet is heavily guarded return home so the user must be logged in to use it we'll continue from where we left off last video let's get into it so it's still saying undefined why is that i think oh it's because i deleted it that's why it says undefined sorry so now when we log in let's log in oh, what just happened dashboard doesn't exist yet that's not a problem what now we're getting the key, yes, we're getting the key. So now the key is here, it exists. Cool. So we can also type if key, so that we don't get a random error. Now what? So we've updated the user, what can we do now? We can go into navbar, this is gonna be a long video by the way. So log in here, now. I believe this is our first conditional that we're going to use. So, where it says login, I believe. Okay, we can type if user. Now the PUG syntax is if user. So if there's a user, we obviously don't want to have this. So we're going to refactor that else. I'm just going to paste that in here. There we go. So, we hit dashboard, slash dashboard. We're just going to have dashboard. So if there is a user in res.locals, remember res.locals can also be accessed within the PUG files. There is also request locals, which is similar, but I don't really use that. So it says dashboard, so it knows there's a user. Now, let's go on to the fun part. Disco oauth.tk. So documentation, user. Oh. So now we can use these properties, user dot username. So add and JR, that's my username. Now, these aren't discord.js properties, by the way. These are OAuth properties, which is slightly different. So be aware of that. So here, I'm going to have an image. It's going to be a round, small image. So navbar. We're going to have some styles here. So user class. We're just going to have. Um, we don't need that class. Uh, user avatar. Sorry. And then underneath, we're going to have the username. Span username. So user avatar, we want a drop down. Okay, so if we look in 1PG, this is how I do it in 1PG. So we have a, this is the prototype, so we have dashboard and logout. Okay, I'm gonna do something similar to that. So, we go to pug, pug HTML again. Our friend, it seems. There we go. So we're going to paste that in in this part. That's cool. Whoop. There we go. So this is white space control. It adds white space within the pug file without actually adding um, physical white space in HTML. So, so we're going to have dashboard here. And we're also going to have a HR and log out. We'll get onto log out in this part, log out. So, HR. So, what does that look like? Uh, we'll see in a minute. So, we can just ignore these. These are just for JavaScript use, I guess. Now, that looks weird. And that's all the way over there. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, I need the dot drop down again. There we go, we put that within that. Boom. Now that goes over there. So, we can put the drop down menu within the button. So, we're going to have the user dot username within the button here. And then we're going to have the image, which is going to be dot user avatar. And this is going to have a source of user dot. Now there's a method called user dot avatar URL. There we go. And we can specify what size we want. 64 pixels should look okay. Oh, look at that. 64 pixels, a bit big, actually. We don't want to have a huge image. That will take a long time to render. And now we can have PL, padding left two. Cool. And then in main.css, did I make that? I did not. So we're going to have a main.css. And this is going to, going to apply to all files. And we're going to have round, so border radius, 50 pixels, which means circular, basically. Well, I'll show you what that does. So, round. It's kind of a utility class here. So, we type dot round. Now, we need to import that in, not in here. Index.pug. We have a lot of indexes going on. With indices, index. Okay, so we type. So we have index.css. We want main. In header, sorry. We, we want. So open. We're going to open header.pug. And then paste main.css within header. So now it's round. Cool, we don't like that background, so let's make it BG. Hold on. So we, we want a transparent background, so... Oh. BG transparent. Do we even want it to be a button? Don't even need this ID. There we go. Now it's not even a button, which is good. The dashboard menu is a bit offset it's not fully on the page so what we do is we type mr2 that pushes it to the right that pushes it to the left a bit oh. now i don't like that so i'm just going to have mr2 and that looks okay there we go so we have log out we can log out let's add a log out route we're speed running it today. Off routes now. How do we log out a user? Well, if we look at our key here, a key decides whether or stores the session of a user. So what do we do with that key or that cookie storing the key? We get rid of it. So log out. It's pretty simple. You can actually revoke the token with Discord, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to log them out. We don't even need async. So, we're going to type res.cookies.set. We're just going to set the key to empty. I don't think you can actually remove cookies. I'm not entirely sure. I've read about you not being able to read... Um, remove cookies, but uh, delete them, sorry. Res.redirect. Keep making these silly mistakes. So now when we log out, oh, we need to log back in. Oh, we're at dashboard now, and we're logged in. So press log out. Should log us out, that's what we want. So another problem here is we're getting horizontal scrolling here. How do we get rid of that? We don't want horizontal scrolling, so we go into main.css and we type body. Now, 
overflow x and the x-axis hidden. Now what? Now when we do that, it's got rid of it. Cool. Get rid of that. Okay. ARIA basically makes sure elements more accessible on the website for users with perception issues, I guess. So what I did here is I removed the tabbing here and it worked. It seemed to log me out. Okay, so now we're going to add the dashboard routes. So let's do this. Probably the longest video in the series, to be honest. But probably the most rewarding, I don't know. Dashboard routes. So we're just going to copy this. Paste it in. What now? So we're going to have an index, actually. Now we can just type router.get slash here. Or what we can do is type app.use slash dashboard, which is a prefix for all routes here. And then dashboard routes, which we'll import. Now, we're just going to render dashboard slash index. So, create a folder called dashboard. Index.pug in, within views. And now what? Well, index, we're just going to copy the actual index here. Okay. Dashboard, we're just going to have dashboard for now. Uh, there we go, that's it, we're just going to have dashboard. So when we go to slash dashboard, it's, it should say just dashboard. Okay, hold on. We need to update this. There we go, slash dash, um, it just says dashboard. <laughs> Okay, so when we're not logged in, what what should we do? Wow, we shouldn't be able to access the dashboard when we're not logged in. How do we fix that? So we type module dot exports dot validate user. I'm going to use alphabetical order here. So we're going to have another async function here, rec response and next. Okay. So try catch. Or oh, we could have try catch, I guess. But in here, we're going to type if there's a key, what should we do? So if there's a key. Then we go into call next. If there's no key, we're going to redirect to 401. So we can just type this. We can use ternary here. We can type if there's a key, next. If there's not a key, then we can type res dot redirect. Or res.render, sorry, res.render 401. We're calling next. So the key, what if the key is expired or a user just manually went into application, found the key, and typed whatever they want, refreshed, and then went to dashboard? Wow. <laughs> Update user is going to be called before this. So, res.locals.user, here, we type that, and now, if there is a user, next, if there isn't, render 401, let's try that. Also, in server, we need to specify here, middleware.validate, let's 
So there must be user logged in to use the dashboard now. Refresh. So there's needs to be an errors slash four one. So now it says four one planet is heavily guarded when we log in. It goes to the dashboard. There we go. I think we're done. Now this was a hard video to follow. <laughs> In the next video, what we'll do is we'll add server selection, we'll add a sidebar. So, we'll have a sidebar similar to this, which is not on this prototype here. Currently we have this selection, but people want to use the sidebar instead, they think it's better. So we're going to have a sidebar that displays the guilds in the next video. So, see you there.